Mama Cray, how's it going? Good, brother. Talk to me. How you doing? Good. We're finally here. This movie's coming out. You know, I know it's been a journey from festivals to getting it out through theaters and other platforms and so forth. Um, talk to me about the premise of, you know, putting this story together. Well, the premise of putting it together, I say it starts like, man, 2017, 18, just looking at things that were happening in the world, looking within myself, relationships, and and wanting to find a way to put it all together to tell a story that was meaningful. And I felt like the best way to explore all these things that I felt like were kind of just plaguing my mind and my heart was to do it through a couple at the center. So through this love story, then was a gateway into all these other like macro and micro things that I wanted to examine that ultimately end up amassing to a lot of nothing. You've been on a lot of projects. This is your first directorial effort, you know, at least feature length wise, you know, what did you learn in the process of doing this movie? Man, I learned a lot. I talk about learning like the true definition of how to be a leader was something that I learned. And uh -huh. then because of just the arduous nature of making films and all the, the moving parts, the biggest lesson when I really think about it is probably patience. Like it's how to balance persistence with patience. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this cast, you know, th there's a lot of familiar names in there. Obviously, Lex Scott comes into mind first. I understand she did this pregnant, you know, not that easy for pregnant women to work. <laughs> Right, and make right. Film. So, how did that come about? You asking her to do it? Did she? Were you? Did you have somebody else in mind? And she says, nah, "I want to do it." <laughs> well, funny enough, I don't know if you know this or not. Well, uh, Lex Scott Davis is actually my wife. So I knew that. Okay. So, that, there, you know? <laughs> so that baby, you know, that's my baby. That was my baby in that. That that, that was a, a bun I put into the oven, and I had written the film with her in mind the whole time that like she inspired that character. And as fate will have it, she ended up really being pregnant while playing the character that was written to be pregnant. And that's the way the timing and the alignment just happened to work out. It was always hers. And there was this moment where she had gotten an offer to do this television show for ABC it was that show Rebel. And, but the, the schedules wouldn't work. And I'm like, well, you got to go and do the big TV show. This is my independent movie. You go take the show. And she's like, it's got to be both or I'm just doing the movie. <laughs> and she was willing to walk away from that. Ultimately, ended up working out for her to be able to do both. But the role was always hers. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you think of the subject matter, you know, obviously we're living, you know, it could be timeless because we're still seeing these stories out there, you know, uh, every day. Was it, there's no... You know, there's there's never there's, there's never so much of a daybreak. You know, it happens anywhere around the world. You know, and uh, obviously you you take what's happening around the world and you flip it away to you know to your story. Um, but you know, when people go see movies these days, they want to get something out of it. They want to be entertained. You know, but also they want to get something out of it. What do you want people to get out of seeing this movie? Oh, I'm so happy you asked that question. With everything that's happening in the world. I think the fact that the subject matter is painfully familiar is something I could see people being kind of hesitant about. But the way I'm approaching the subject matter, if you come in with your thinking cap on and your heart open, you get an opportunity to laugh unexpectedly at the absurdity and the ridiculous nature of the way we interact and engage with people as a society right now. So the things you get to take away is you come out of this with a fresh perspective, not just on yourself, but on the people that you may be encountering, not knowing what they're dealing with. And it's a lot of role reversals in this film where you'll see one character in a position that you might normally see a person of a different race or gender in that position, which could hopefully create greater opportunities for empathy. So there are a ton of takeaways, but the entertainment value is high. The artistry is high and the commentary and the opportunity for us to have nuanced conversations I feel like it's the thing I'm probably the most proud of in this film and the thing that we need most as a takeaway in society. The fact that we need to acknowledge nuance is still a very real thing. Having worked as an actor for so many years, but here you're the director, the cast is your cast, 
you know, did you feel pressure in terms of like, these are people I know, they're being put in this movie, other people want to get in on it because everybody wants to work with friends, you know, uh, what's your takeaway as you go on to your other projects that you're going to hopefully direct as far as features? Well, the takeaway is that you got to, it's all about alignment of goals and ideals, I think. You know, there's a lot of people that are talented that came in and for whatever reason, that alignment wasn't there, whether they were a friend or somebody I didn't know. And what I want to always take with me moving forward is working with people that just feel like we're in aligned and we're pursuing the same thing and willing to commit at the same level. And that's, that's, that kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off, I think, on both sides of it. Like, if we're signing up to do the same thing in the same way, it's really no pressure. We just kind of get in the sandbox together and start playing, and we'll build what we aim to build. Before I let you go, is the sequel with Gerard Butler happening again? Man, I don't know what I can say about that, but I will say I've been getting some really interesting phone calls lately as of this week. So you didn't die in the first one. <laughs> no, I did not die in the first one, which is why I'm getting phone calls presently. And I think details are, are uh, soon to come. But, you know, that film was one of the best experiences for me as an actor, like just working with Jerry and 50 and all. We all really got on really well making that film. And and people love that movie. Den of Thieves is a classic. I That's what I'm saying. You're like, yeah. it's been some time. You know, what are we waiting for? You know, Let's you're still it. around. Gerard's still making movies left and right. But so. he needs to make Dead of Thieves too. That's the thing. But the director, Christian Gutegas, he's like, he's like me. That dude is on a mission. He's going to make this sequel happen. Christian Gutegas is not going to let it lie flat. I don't go many places without somebody giving me some love about Dead of Thieves. So. Hey, but in the meantime, we've got a lot of nothing. Congratulations. Yes. Good support. Keep it going. Wherever you're at, stay safe. Thank you. You too. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Summer House of Black from the TV. How's it going, folks? Good. How are you? Good. You, you know, this, this film after the festival circuit is finally coming out, you know, but you know, when you think of the subject matter, this is something where parts of the storyline still happens today. You know, so you, what was going into saying yes to taking on the roles that you have? Elon? It's just that, the, well, Mo. Our director, Mo McCray, he is a big motivation in me taking on the role just because I really respect him as an artist and as an actor. And I saw his vision pretty clearly. And then selfishly being able to play a character that has so many things going on, so many nuances and so many complexities, that for me was a, a big motivation. Cleo? I, I would say very much the same thing, Mo's vision. Um, to take on these themes in a way that is so nuanced uh, and then to shoot it in this beautiful way and then to create these characters that, you know, are incredibly complex. It, it's, it's, it's like such a gift as an actor. Um, but then it's also a movie I want to see. I want to see movies made like this. I, it makes me feel grateful as an artist to be able to reflect the times whether they be good or bad. You know, every time an actor plays, takes on a role, I like to think there's a little bit of, of themselves in a character that they're playing. They got to read somewhere along. It's, it's got to work along with your psyche when you say, how do I get into it? How did you get into playing this character? Is there any characteristics of it that you can relate to? Cleo? Absolutely. I, Vanessa and I are... Um, we're different people, of course, but there are some common themes. We're both biracial. I understand the isolation that you can sometimes feel as a biracial person, particularly growing up in Australia. I did not have a community. Um, so I, I got to draw from that. And for me, it makes it all worth it. I mean, we make lemonade, right? This is why I'm an artist. This is why I'm an actor. Um, I'd been waiting for a character like Vanessa my whole career. So, yes, I do relate deeply to what she struggles with. Um, I think I'm a little more self-reflective and I, I have an outlet and she is someone who, who doesn't. So it's interesting to see um, what can go wrong in that scenario and when someone feels powerless how aggressively they reach out for that power. 
at times. But what about you, Ilana? You know, your character is supposed to be the guy of sound and mind. <laughs> mm. You know, yeah. how do you relate to him? I mean, I related to him through compassion because much like what Cleo said, that isolation. That, that I think that that James, he's playing all of these roles. He has all of these per public personas that he's perfected in his mind. But deep down inside, he hasn't really paid too much attention to himself and how he really feels, like authentically. Um, and I could relate to that because at a time, that was me. And James spends all this time distancing himself from who he really is as a means of being successful and, you know, living a life that's polished and beautiful and big house, making a lot of money. So I feel a lot of compassion for that. Um, that's, where I, that's where I started, through compassion and, and non-judgment and wanting to give him a voice as he goes on his journey that he doesn't want to go on that ends up allowing him to, you know, have these revelations at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, the movie is a small film, five, six, I think five characters, but Mo's an actor. You know, what was it like having actor turned director work for you guys? And what's your takeaway from his direction that maybe helps your skill set as an actor as you go on to other projects? You know, oh my God, it's incredible. Oh, anyone can answer it. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll both. But it, I just wanted to say it was incredible, like to work with a director that has such an understanding of what it means to be an actor. It was huge. It was incredible. We rehearsed a lot and he was just really able to passionately articulate exactly what he wanted from us. He understood what it meant to be in our shoes as actors. He knew what he was asking of us. So that was incredibly satisfying we take some big swings in this film. So the trust was there because of that, I think. And it, it emboldened me to be able to really go there. Um, and then just being able to do some of the things that the film asked of us, such as the 17 minute one take opening scene that has sharpened my acting moving forward for the rest of my career. 100%. Uh -huh. Elon? Yeah. The, the ability that Mo possesses to instill trust and loyalty. I mean, we started this film in 2020, then COVID happened, and then we had to pick up this film again. And I don't know, I like to think of myself as a warrior, but having Mo sort of be at, at the helm of this and his motivational spirit and his sense of discipline and his artistry was a phenomenal part of me surrendering to the fact that I had the opportunity to come back and do this film. Uh, Mo, I can't speak enough about Mo and his uh, his his uh, contributions to my humanity and my artistry and you know my manhood. That's that's my mm -hmm. brother. What goes into saying yes? Obviously, you know, you mentioned you know. You, you shot this thing, you got to stop to come back, you know, to doing this during COVID. But, you know, as you, as you, life has gone on, what goes into saying yes to any of the projects you take? You know, is it the script? Is it the people? Is it the location? Is it all three of them? You know, what's the first thing that sticks out when somebody says, I have this for you, or I'd like you for this project? Money. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Let's be all. real. Let's keep I'm it real. No, no, I'm joking. That's completely false. Um, I like the, what what what's the content like? What's the content like, and who are, who am I going to be able to work with? And do I see myself with the capability of being a vessel for whatever energy this character possesses on paper? Um, it's a lot of different things. It's a lot of different things. Uh, not so much location for me. I like it. I like. I want to. I want to go everywhere. I will go anywhere to if it's something that speaks to my heart and resonates with me. Leo. For me, I think every project has different things that are attractive about it um, in terms of the artistry. But I think it's more like, what are we saying? What are we trying to say generally within the character, but also generally? We're living in a time where there's more shows and movies than ever before. There's a lot of noise. So why are we hitting record on the camera? Like, what makes this special? What are we trying to say? How does this contribute to 
the overall conversation. That's sort of what I look for in my projects, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that leads me to this. As to end off, at the end of the day, as you mentioned, there's a lot of projects out there. You know, people can decide whether to stay home and watch a movie, whether to go to the theaters. A lot of programs on network, cable, streaming, Fire Stick, you know, <laughs> TikTok or whatever. You can find different things. What's going to get an audience to see this movie? Elon? <laughs> What's going to get an audience to see this movie? Um, I think what gets the audience to see this movie is, you know, being open minded to somebody who's looking for different perspectives on something that is uh, is very complex, man. Um, that's what I think. So somebody, somebody that's looking for something for for uh, a project that offers a variety of perspectives on uh, something that touches all of us in a very intimate way. Well said. But folks, it's always fun to talk to you guys. I know I always see you in different projects. So it's always good to see you guys working. You know, I'm sure you have projects down the road. We can always talk about that later. Wherever you guys are at, stay safe. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Can I add something quickly before okay. you go? I just want to say this movie is incredibly entertaining and surprisingly funny. I think that's a big part of what people are going to enjoy about watching it. So would you say it's a comedy thriller? It's a satirical thriller. Dark comedy. Yeah. <laughs> satirical is the right word. Satirical is the right word. Well, we'll talk down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Wilson Morales from Black Film TV. Hello, folks. How's it going? Hi, how are you? Good. So, Lex, I understand you were pregnant and you decide, still decided to do this movie. <laughs> you know, not that often we see that happen in films or TV. So talk to me about, you know, what kept you saying yes to taking on most project? <laughs> well, Candy was written pregnant before I was even part of the conversation for playing her. Uh, it just so happened that I ended up pregnant when we started filming. But um, <laughs> there's quite a journey with that because we started filming before the pandemic um, and I was pregnant. Then we had to shut down once COVID became a very, very real thing. Um, so by the time we went back into production, I was no longer pregnant. So half of the film, there is an actual baby in there. The other half, there is no baby in there. Um, but yeah, it was all actual it was coincidence. Mm -hmm. How about you, Shamir? You know, I see you on a lot of different projects, TV, films. It's always good to see you working in different sorts of projects. You know, you're not tied. You're, you know, you're not uh, uh, playing the same type of character. What led you to say yes to this one? I said this before, but I'll say it again. Mo McCray, <laughs> that's it. That, that name came into the email. Mo was a friend of mine. I worked with him on a TV series, and I tried to work for him, even though he was a friend, which I love, because I appreciate the hustle. Um, but you know, seeing him step in, stepping into a directorial position, producing position and writing position. He's a multi-hyphenate on this film. And I really want to take a second to highlight how important that is, especially in this climate. He's a black man who is doing everything and doing it at a high level. And that alone is the reason why I said yes. Aside to, adjacent to that, the script, the story, the characters, the cast. I mean, it's a laundry list of just sterling gems that made it very hard for me to say no. So I'm just really grateful that he said yes to me and, and, and thought of me and chose me to be a part of his journey and his legacy because we're gonna be seeing a lot of Mo from now until, you know, kingdom comes. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about the subject matter, you know, this is something that people are still experiencing these days, wherever they're at, whether we see it on TV, it's happening nearby so forth. Um, did any of that come into mind, you know, when you're taking on this role, even though both of you obviously are connected to Mo, but, you know, did you guys have discussions as far as where the story is going and what you want people to get out of it? Lex? We, I mean, we definitely had several, several discussions. This was um, an environment that welcomed rehearsal and welcomed conversation. Um, I think Mo led the group extremely well um as an actor himself as a father as a black man himself it is like shamir said there's a laundry list of reasons why he was perfect for this type of story and breaking it down um but we also had help from one of our most prevalent producers Annie clemens as well in that process of really having a dialogue about the themes that are happening in this film um 
So, I mean, it's relevant when he wrote it. It's relevant now. It's going to continue to be relevant no matter when this decided to come out. But what we hope, or at least I hope, for people to get out of this is a is the willingness to have a safe dialogue and welcome different types of opinions from people who look like them. As mentioned, both of you have worked with Mo as actors. Here you work with him as a director. What was your takeaway from his direction that helps you guys, your skill set as actors, as you move on to other projects? Shamir? Um, truth. He understands truth behind and in front of the camera. Accessing, to getting to that truth. Um, reinforcing truth, trying to keep it as real and authentic as possible is really important. You know, some filmmakers really care about the shot. Some filmmakers really care about, you know, the fancy X, Y, Z. Him, it was really, you know, in conjunction with those elements, but truth, you know, because he's an actor first and foremost. And so that was really the takeaway because he was just really adamant about making sure that we got to the most authentic place. And he just kept pushing me specifically, um, which is awesome. You know what I mean? And he did it in the Mo way, which I love, which is like, hey, remember me, you got to get that. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I speak like that too, which is like, it's like a game time, you know, Avenger athlete, Kobe Bryant, Mamba mentality, which I really appreciate because I, I, you know, I approach the work like that. It's, it's, you know, we play for keeps and Mo plays for keeps. And that's why I rock with him, you know? Lex? <laughs> Something I learned a lot um, from him was, um i i come from a dance background specifically ballet and with that is very rigid it's very like perfect lines exactly exact steps at the exact count and all these things and as i went into acting even something as full as hitting your mark or making sure you say the line exactly how you said it in this take before and all of these things because of continuity um he's kind of like just let it go just be free. Find your person. Find your character through just just loosening up and, and and shedding all of those layers. You have it. You did the work. Now let it all go. And um, that's something I've embraced from that point and beyond. Um, even when we worked with each other as actors, I would. He was he was a co star, but I was kind of going to him like, "How would you think about that last take?" Like that was, a, you know, like I always kind of deferred to him from the from the moment we met in terms of the performance. And um, with Candy, I was falling and in, into that trap, and and I only know it. I don't think everyone else knows it, but I know it, and he knows it, and he kind of saw it. And one of the takes we used for scene in particular, I know that that is the take where he reminded me to be free. And that's the one that made it into the cut. So I, I take that with me um, everywhere I go. Congratulations on this row. You guys had a blast working. It's good to know that I know all of you guys because I've talked to you guys in the past. And I will do so again in the future on different projects. Wherever you guys are at, stay safe. We'll talk down the road.